APIs. Um, and the way we're tackling this is to try and highlight not just the Visual Studio experience, but also things like what it would look like on an iOS experience or an Android experience. So this property manager app um, that I've got available here, if I go over to my dashboard for that app, essentially the scenario is, is that it's about kind of having repairs of uh, properties that you own. And the scenario that I used earlier this morning, which I'll kind of re reuse again to, uh, today, was uh, this scenario of having this ability of being able to take maybe a look at someone's apartment and see the, the maybe some things that needed some repairs, and then for a repair guy to go out on site to that, that house at a separate time and actually have the ability then to make the repairs, take the photos of the repairs, and then submit them through. Now, that typically could have been totally written from scratch and you could have built and used a lot of different libraries and hosted all these things yourselves. But the benefit of this application here is, is that we're using a lot of the building blocks that are available within Office 365. So for instance, when I look at these properties and the inspections and then the repairs that are going on, as I go through and maybe I want to see that this needs a repair and it's not scheduled, when I click through on that schedule, what that's actually going to do is it's going to look at that user's calendar as I select them and pull up the available slots for that user. And when it's done that, when I click schedule, it's going to send a mail to that guy, the repair guy, add it to his exchange calendar as a calendar invite, and then notify him on his iPad app that he has another repair to do. As long as the internet is... Uh, working for me here. I'm just going to, okay, there you go, it's coming up now. So I can see here that, you know, this needs to be fixed, so this needs to be fixed. And down here I'm just going to pick Ron the repair guy, and you can see that Ron isn't very busy at the minute because he's available for every slot in his calendar for today. And when I pick that time and click schedule repair, while that's doing that, if I just show you under the, under the hood what that's doing, is inside my SharePoint site, I have a bunch of those lists and libraries that's storing all that data. And what you'll notice is here, we've actually got some workflow running on those individual incidents that have been recorded. So if I jumped into an incident here, and I had a look maybe at some of these ones that have already been done, <clears throat> excuse me, if I go over to workflows, what you'll see is, is that I'll have a workflow history of this incident that had been sent out to a repair guy. The repair guy had actually fixed the thing and submitted it for approval. And then at every stage in that process, whether it was in the web app or whether it was in the iOS app, is talking back to SharePoint and updating that workflow. So you can see here there was a workflow that's already completed. And you can see that there was tasks associated for uh, Ron to go out and have a look at that repair. So again, we, we're leveraging that underlying technology that maybe as a SharePoint developer you've used in the past, but now building that in against those APIs, against this authentication, to really leverage that business process within your organizations. And then if I flip over to my Mac quickly, with the announcements of the, OA, uh, the OS X uh, SDKs with Xcode 6.1, we can now build our standard iOS device apps against those APIs in a very easy way, either against the, the Swift language or the Objective-C language. I personally um, have looked in the Objective-C language, and I'm pretty grateful that I work within C Sharp and Visual Studio for the majority of my time. Um, I'm sure if any has the experience, it's not as polished. Um, but what you'll see is in this emulator here, I'm running the repair app. And if I launch that repair app, again, I'm going to get the same experience. I'm going to click in, I'm going to sign into that property, and I'll get all that data being pulled through these APIs directly from that SharePoint experience, whether it's via the Files API to save all the photos or retrieve all the photos, or whether it's the Workflow APIs or the List APIs to store all of this data. And so as I scroll down here and look, I've got, obviously Ron's very busy, he's got a bunch of repairs here, and, and just for a bit of fun, I had one earlier on, um, and I just recommend you guys, you know, I know you're here at a conference, I know you're staying in hotels, but, you know, we've all seen the films like The Hangover where things get a little bit out of control, and so I just recommend not to go too crazy and to look after your hotel rooms because we don't want Ron to have to go out and repair your hotel before you leave at the end of the week. But what Ron can do here from his iPad app is when he's in here, um, he can go and select a photo, say he's gone and tidied up the room, and when he selects that photo, that's automatically now going to go and upload that to SharePoint. And I can go fix the horrible mess, animals. 
and click done. And what that's going to do is save that comment back against that incident. And then lastly, what Ron's going to do is he's going to kick off that workflow, which is to finalize that repair. And what that would have done then is this progress that workflow to the next state that's running within SharePoint against that list item inside SharePoint. So again, leveraging those building blocks but using these APIs.